This following video is presented by Presence Consulting Group, where we commit ourselves to your project's success. For more information, please visit our website at www.presencecg.com. Our topic for this tutorial is implementing audit trails in Iron Speed Designer. And our presenter is Iron Speed MVP Herman Chan. For questions after seeing the video, please email Herman at herman.chan at presencecg.com. Hi everyone, this is Herman Chen from Presence Consulting. So today we're going to talk about how to implement audit trails in Iron Speed Designer. And before we talk about the, the technical stuff, let's, let's just visit why do we want to have it. So typically in the, a lot of the aggregations, you really want to find out when an, uh, a new record gets created or last updated, you want to know you know who created this or you know when it was created and uh you know when it was last updated uh in a crm situation you would have your salespeople creating new contacts or creating new communication logs for example and you want to know you know when it was created and uh, you know who created this customer especially in some uh, pages where you want to log down to okay I only want to see my own records and those are the contacts I've created or those are the products that I bought uh, typically in your my account page or in any one of those uh, aggregations you only want to see your personalized records you have to have those information so you can filter out you know all these other records that are not owned by this person owned by this user so so that's the primary reason why you want to have audit trails and of course you know with today's compliance requirements you almost always want to have some reference information so you can go back to and say okay this uh, product or this transaction or, or this uh, whatever record that your business application deals with is last edited by this person on this date you'll be able to show this information to your management or to the auditors Okay, so let's go to the database for a second. How should we design this table in order for us to capture those information? In, in this video, I'm gonna use a small database, asset management demo, and uh, it only has a few tables. It's, it's the same database that I've used for a couple of times you know, in different videos to uh, introduce different functions or talk about different functions. So in this case, uh, I'm going to focus on adding a product or updating a product. So inside the product table, I have those four fields, create user, update user, create date, and update date in order to capture those information. So going back to the application, I have this show product page. And as you can see, it has you know listed out the create user column, update user column, so on and so forth create date and update dates are, are here. So we'll go to the add product page. This is, aggregation is just generated by Iron Speed Designer. So I haven't touched this page yet. No customization whatsoever. And as you can see, this add product page lets you put in typically your product name, you know, who manufactures this product, product group, reseller, so on and so forth. And on the right hand side, we have Create date, update date, create user, update user. So when user saves information, they basically have to go in and put in today's date and and uh, you know which user it is. And if they know their own user ID, they can put that in. More than likely, they don't. So how do we automate automatically populate those information? So let's get back into the uh, RSP designer for a second. This is our add product page. And as you can see, we have, you know, create date label here, create date, uh, text box control, create user label, create user text box control. What we want to do is to utilize the formula feature of Iron Speed Designer. So go to my create date and uh, let me, under actions, so let me back up a little bit. Under actions, there are different places for you to put in formulas. And in this case, you want to override 
this event initialize when adding record because this is where we want to auto populate the uh, the create date so click on this icon right here and uh, instead of using this default value which is nothing you want to go with uh, right click and then it opens up a menu for you to choose your formula go to functions date and time and just use now so click OK and then on create user inside the same functions the same overriding the same event you come here change out the user default value which is again is, is nothing so you go to functions and then you go to security and choose user ID in this case for this application I already turn on the security wizard the security on, on this application so after you log in it knows the system knows who is the person currently logged in and, and provides you with a user ID through this function so click OK on those and let me rebuild the application Okay, so let me uh, re-locked in. After I rebuild, it will prompt me to a locked in again. Okay, so I'm using my test account. Click OK. And this time when I go to the app product page, it automatically displays or auto populates your create date and also your create user ID and in this case it's, it's 9 with my uh, test account so you, you have this information exposed to the user but it's, it's not really um, it's kind of error prone because people can still go in and then change the date and change the create user ID so, so that's, that's not really uh, tight from a security perspective so you want to go back into your app product page and to, to make it look better first you don't need to expose those fields anymore it should be behind the scenes so in this case I take out my two create uh, con uh, the create labels and then in the create date text control I still want those because the function that I've done the customization is on the control itself I cannot just delete it so I would go in here and then under behavior change the visibility to false so then my user doesn't see it and then they they can edit it in that case so let me build it and logged in go back to my app product page and as you can see uh, those two edit fields are being hidden I can't see it, I, I can't change it so for demo I'm adding a new product let's just call PCG product and then I'm going to use Apple uh, let's say this is uh, this product group and save it so let me see okay so this is being saved to the database correctly as as you can see create user and create day is being populated correctly because it's behind the scenes it's hidden from the front end but then when the records being saved to the table it, it that text box was already populated and and also the create user ID 
So that's how you can do uh, audit trails on a page level. But what if you have a lot of places that you can add a product and you don't want to do all this page level code customization. So for example, if you're adding a new product group and on that same page you have a child tab for products and you can add different products and you don't want to you know, override it here and then perhaps you have another pop-up page that lets you do something like that and then you have to override it there again. You just you know, want to you know, do it once and kind of forget about it. So instead of doing it on the page level, under your layout editor, go to your databases tab and under product, uh, we can override it on the database side, on the virtual database side and it will take care of it for all the pages that are creating product or updating product depending on you know how, how you set your formula. So in this case what I'm going to do is instead of overriding create on the page level I'm overriding update here to show you the different entry points. So you can go to your update date and again under actions that's where you that's where you pick which event to override. So in, in this case, because it is updating instead of creating, I override this formula for updating records. So I enabled it and uh, put now just like before. And then for update user, I pick the same event. And again, I'm using uh, user ID. Click OK and build. Going back to this page, show product. And let me search for the product I just put in. So this is my edit page. Remember, I haven't touched my edit page. So this is straight out of the box um, without any auto population of update date or update user. So I, I'm going to change something. This is a product from, let's say, Presence Consulting and then I click save. See my update date and my, oh it doesn't have the update, update user right here, update user and update date are being populated automatically and it's not on the page level it is using my database level uh, formula. So in this case once you have you know, put in all the necessary formulas in your database level, you don't even have to worry about your uh, page level customization. For me, a lot of times is when, when I am working on the ad page, I would just take off all these audit fields. You know, people can't see it. And if I, if I do it on the database level, and I can just go ahead and delete all those fields instead of marking them as hidden, I just delete them. And then on the edit page, I would just mark those fields to be view only, like change it to a label so people cannot change it. And then in that case, um, I have my audit trial information done in five minutes. Uh, so thank you for watching the video. I hope it's helpful. Uh, please send me an email if you have any questions. Thank you. Bye bye.